Welcome back. So this is the third session. This one's on the design phase and sustainable construction strategies. So I trust that you've listened to the first two, providing a, a background uh, to the construction demolition waste problem, and then we've looked at some relevant materials. In terms of minimising construction waste, we're focused in this training package on the design phase. So looking at the middle column, uh, that's the first of three construction phases, naturally. And of the seven construction principles, reduce, reuse, recycle, protect nature, eliminate toxics, life cycle costing and quality on the left, all seven of them feed into that design phase. And, and in this session, we're looking at some of the sustainable construction strategies, particularly the first three, design for deconstruction, design for flexibility and adaptability, uh, design for long life, and then look at a few other strategies, including material optimization and reuse recovery. Now this diagram um, has uh, been generated from various sources which are listed below, but also uh, on the last slide in the final session where the references are. Some general points on the construction waste design stage. Certainly a substantial amount of construction waste originates as a result of poor design. And causes of waste at the design stage could be changes to the design, complexity in design and detailing, detailing errors, unclear specifications, a lack of information on the drawings, um, or just down to poor communication and coordination. It's not saying, like a lot of other things, we can't get it down we'll be able to get down to zero and, and no waste at all, but certainly it can be improved uh, more, more than currently. So, and, and, when you, and certainly when there are statistics like a third of on-site waste is due to architects' failure to implement waste reduction during the design stage. So what's the role of the architects at the design stage? Informing clients about the impacts of waste must be included, as well as the benefits of waste minimisation. Secondly, to in, in initiate waste reduction strategies at a project level. And thirdly, to improve design practice by addressing the key causes of design waste. In terms of strategies um, for an architect, this could be standardising design and prefabrication, influencing the reusing and recyclability of materials, using educational programmes to help clients and other stakeholders understand the importance of waste minimisation. And that's partly why we're doing these training packages. It's come out as the importance of educational programs to help understand the importance of waste minimization. And I hope this is he helping you in that goal. Finally, using clear and comprehensive designing tools to assist in waste minimization. And actually we've reviewed some of the tools. I've checked these four on the right recently and they're, they're all um, active. So do follow them up and uh, maybe pause and, and take note or, f or follow links. But they are a range of tools, there's guides, there's a library, all interactive, all very useful. Uh, so do dip into them uh, when you get the chance. So the first of the strategies listed in the first slide in this session is design for deconstruction. So deconstruction is the careful piece by piece disassembly of buildings. The deconstruction of a building is also known as selective demolition or disassembly. The main goal here is to maximise the potential reuse and recovery of a building's components and materials to prevent demolition at the end of life. And actually the benefits of conducting deconstruction processes can outweigh the cost as long as the value of the building component is preserved when it reaches its end of life. So again, coming back to these financial economic benefits, if that can be achieved, then it's, it's a real success. The range of actions that support um, DFD have a look through some of these. Uh, some of them relate to materials, some of them practical, uh, log logistical ways of doing it, whether through a manual, uh, whether through standard processes. Uh, things like, I'm just reading the bottom three, have a look through them all. Avoid use of joints and screws. Avoid use of chemical connections, such as adhesives or coatings. Um, and avoid the use of hazardous materials and compounds. So a range of actions that can be undertaken to support DFD. In terms of the the second, now, design for flexibility and adaptability. Flexibility means you can transform with low resource consumption, um, and a, a design for adaptability involves structural material alterations to reuse materials in the future. So a building could have multiple life cycles to make the most of resources and materials in terms of spatial and technical domains. 
I mean, already seeing in offices at the moment, the last five years, a lot more working from home, uh, big changes in what that bu those buildings are used for. Um, I see here on campus with a lot of online learning, lecture rooms changing. So a lot of um, changes of use uh, with buildings. Some more specific actions, um, increased convertibility. Allow for changes in building use by designing the building envelope to allow for more than one use or to allow modifications in things such as window size and spacing. Use standard, simple construction tools and technologies. And finally, avoid some of these bespoke or tailor-made solutions and complex building geometries. The third strategy in that first slide is designed for long life. To keep the value of materials and resources as uh, long as possible by intensifying their use. S various actions, uh, specifying durable components, avoiding the use of synthetic materials that do not allow refurbishment, prioritizing standardized modular elements, so that's standardization again. Maximize durability of the building structure through careful selection, protection, and maintenance of components. Coming onto the finances, making use of whole life cycle cost assessment as a design assessment tool. And finally, Assembling in a systematic, logical manner that is suitable for maintenance and allows for the possibility of replacement. So there were two others in that list of five. They're included here in a list of other ones. Design for dematerialization, design for reuse, design for restoring and regenerating, design for climate resilience uh, in response to climate uh, change challenge that mentioned in the very first session, design for sharing, and finally design for waste prevention. So all of these design strategies have been appraised uh, by the Curtin team and they've generated this appraisal table looking at key circular economy design practice practices. And these are aligned with the EMF principles. So um, Ellen MacArthur Foundation um, has three principles. Firstly, design out waste and pollution. Secondly, keep products and materials in use. And thirdly, regenerate natural systems. So each of the strategies has been appraised using kind of a standard traffic light system where high, uh, green is high, uh, yellow or amber are medium, and red low in terms of um, potential. Now, the thing for me that stands out is there's not one uh, clear uh, solution. Uh, the, the better performing, designed for reuse, designed for sharing, designed for waste prevention, um, have more green. Um, and yellow don't have any, any red squares, um, but certainly for design out waste pollution, keep products and materials in use have a high uh, potential, um, but are medium in the others. So there's a whole range of strategies presented here. Uh, there's a whole range of principles that can be applied, not all of them relevant to each project uh, and some more than others. So I hope this session is giving you some different ideas of use in the work that you do. And finally for this session, uh, here is a sample checklist for implementing the C guidelines strategies. The strategies, it covers the, the three that we looked at in a bit more depth and the first three in the uh, appraisal table on the previous slide. So if you look at the actions, uh, I'm not going to read them all out, but they're according to the three strategies. Uh, upward design for deconstruction, design for longevity, and design for flexibility. So devise your own checklist. It's a good way of going through and then ticking off to make sure that everything has been achieved. Uh, some of these actions may be more relevant than others to you. So again, this is something that I hope that you can take away with you, adapt and use in practice. So that's the end of the third session. I hope you found it useful. So I'll stop here and then the final one is to uh, provide you how this has come together in some case studies. Thank you very much.